This is insane. Oh no! <laughs> I felt things that weren't there. Just this past week, I flew out to one of the biggest VR and AR conferences in the world, the Augmented World Expo, a place where companies from all over the XR industry can come show off their latest technology to the entire world. And my mind has been absolutely blown this past week. Whoa! From actually functional augmented reality glasses to full-on VR rigs that allow you to feel things realistically to some of the very first holograms anyone can buy. This is the Augmented World Expo. And for the first time, we get to experience it together. Together. Thank you to Qualcomm for sponsoring this video and making all this happen. But here is everything I saw at AWE. There is one company that I have probably covered about 10 times on my channel, and I have dreamt of trying out their systems, and that's Haptics, the leading haptic VR solution on the market, and supposedly the most realistic way you can feel virtual objects while in VR. And famously, the creator of the rig that Jeff Bezos used to control a set of robotic arms, making him look like a Marvel supervillain. <laughs> And I finally got a chance to try them. But first, some quick background so you get why these are so insane. There are lots of haptic force feedback glove solutions out there across the price spectrum. From Lucas's homemade gloves for under $60 to Sense gloves reaching up to $5,000. But haptics is in a whole different category, costing more than most luxury cars even. But that's also because they do something quite a bit differently. Using a full-on air compressor side unit and backpack, the massive haptics gloves have 133 tiny feedback points per hand that act as little air pockets pushing against your skin, allowing them to simulate nearly any texture you'd feel in VR. The little points inflating or deflating to provide different sensations with something called an extend-in pulling the fingers back so it feels like you're actually holding a physical object even though it's only in VR. And in my demo, I was legitimately weirded out by the sensation of holding objects that felt like they were actually in my hand but were only virtual. At one point, I held a virtual rope and pulled tension back on the rope with my other hand. I could feel the force getting stronger and stronger against my fingers and wrist as I pulled back, but here's where it gets crazy. I could have sworn there was tension against my entire back as I pulled this string, as there would be normally, but the haptics guys told me that's just my brain filling in the gaps. The sensations the haptics gloves were providing to only my hands were so realistic that my brain just made up these sensations to match for the rest of my body. There was no back strain but it really felt like it because my body just expected there to be. And I can definitely see how these gloves have been used for all sorts of applications, from robotics to surgical training, military training, and Haptic says that they absolutely want to branch out to the consumer market at some point, but getting consumers to spend $100,000 on a set of gloves just to give head pats isn't something very reliable, so they instead are just pushing the boundaries in ways that make sense. I will say though, the sensations I felt were very real with the Haptics gloves. I felt things that weren't there. <laughs> but the visuals felt like a bottleneck with the now three-year-old Valve Index used during my demo. Not a problem though, because just down the conference hall, Vario was demoing the XR3. Still, to this day, the clearest and, in my opinion, best VR headset available on the market. Not cheap, still costing nearly $7,000, but their specialty being the aspheric lenses and quad displays, giving them some of the best visuals available on any headset. And they did something really special and interesting with their own demo. Using the dual LiDAR cameras on the front of the headset, Vario set up the XR3 to play a 3D pass-through version of Beat Saber, making it feel like the blocks were flying at you from reality. A really cool experience, and honestly, there are some situations where I could see myself liking this a little better than normal Beat Saber. Playing around people and being able to see my environments and having the game come at me from the environment was really cool, and it's something that I think we're going to see a lot more of in the future as higher quality pass-through becomes available on more headsets. But not every everything at AWE is all about super expensive enterprise level gear that's out of the price range of just about everybody except for Jeff Bezos. <laughs> I finally got a chance to try out the Lynx R1, an upcoming VR headset that is really special and set to compete directly against the Quest 2 and Meta's upcoming Cambria. And I guess I'll start with the fact that this is way more than just a VR headset. Featuring an array of cameras on the front that allow for high definition, color, and low latency pass-through, making this essentially a full-on virtual reality and pass-through augmented reality headset. It's also standalone with an XR2 on board and also allows for PC VR usage. Has a flip-up display 
display, hand tracking with optional controllers, and interestingly enough, has this crazy weird prism lens design. I wasn't sure how well it would actually look through the lenses, but it actually looks really, really good with a pretty wide field of view, maybe even wider than the Quest. And I don't know exactly how they do it. I didn't get a whole lot of time with the Lynx, but I'll definitely be doing a full review video on the headset in just a couple months when Lynx officially releases. And here's the fun part. The Lynx R1 is launching next month for $599 for consumers and $1,000 for Enterprise. Still not Quest 2 prices, but you do get a little more with the package without a Facebook login, if that matters to you. Now we can talk about some augmented reality stuff, and this is where things get really exciting, like culturally shifting exciting. I feel like we all have this idea of AR. I know I was inspired way back when Google made its original Google Glass video, but that was almost a decade ago, and really good AR technology has just kind of been out of reach until the technology fundamentally improves. But we're getting really close, and it's not just one or two companies doing this, it's the entire industry making strides towards affordable, really good AR. We're essentially at the Google Cardboard and DK1 phase of AR. And I'll start with Qualcomm and their own big strides. At AWE, Qualcomm made a pretty big announcement for Snapdragon Spaces, an XR development platform that allows pretty much anyone with an app to integrate augmented reality features into their application using OpenXR. This could be a map overlay for a phone or a flat screen game, the map projected off screen to save screen real estate, or something way more ambitious like an app prototype, or even really easy ports of existing VR games into AR, which was actually shown here surprisingly. Demio, one of my favorite VR games, was ported using Snapdragon Spaces into a set of AR glasses that had full 6 off control. For the first time, I was able to actually play Demio in AR, making it one of the first true cross-reality games available on PC, AR, and VR, and playable with all of each other. And the crazier part is that this was a totally playable demo all with an augmented reality, and they only spent like a week on the port. But that's kind of what they're doing with Snapdragon Spaces. They're trying to make it easy so more people develop for AR. But let's talk about the hardware. This is one of Qualcomm's very first AR hardware development kits that anyone can get their hands on. Sort of like the early DK1s and DK2s of the VR scene. Featuring a set of birdbath optic Lenovo Think Reality A3 AR glasses with a Motorola Edge Plus smartphone. Of course, with Qualcomm's newest Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. Getting a lot of time with this pair during AWE, augmented reality is moving really fast. I mean, this is the thing. A device that projects virtual objects into reality has six degrees of freedom and spatial tracking, eventually hand tracking, there are just so many use cases. And I also got to try out the legit cardboard of AR called HoloKit, something that you can get right now if you have an iPhone and want to try out AR for yourself. And it was actually really freaking good for just using an iPhone screen and it had hand tracking and six off tracking and everything. Really, really cool. And that wasn't all for AR at AWE, not even close, but let's go back to VR for a moment. I love my Valve Index Knuckles controller, but this isn't the end-all be-all VR controller. More than two years after its original announcement, I finally got to try out the new AT controller, a controller that offers many of the same features as the Index. Finger tracking, grip strength sensitivity, super precise haptics, optional Steam VR lighthouse tracking, and more for around the same price as the Knuckles, but in a much smaller and lightweight package. And for all this time, I've been pretty skeptical because the whole idea behind the AT is that, well, it's a controller without a single button. Like, not one button on this thing. Everything is sensor, sensitivity, or gesture based, including the thumbstick or lack of a thumbstick. But I was really surprised. Within a few minutes of using the AT, it was all very intuitive and the controller felt really good in my hands. The most surprising thing for me was the accuracy of the finger tracking. A lot of times the index has a couple fingers that are just a little off, and this was really precise. And also, the trackpad-like finish on the top of the controller doesn't feel like a trackpad, it feels more like a weird thumbstick, but it's not a thumbstick. And for a lot of games, I'm sure that using an actual thumbstick will be a little better. But for things like VRChat, honestly, when these launch, I may make the switch to Etsy controllers from Knuckles because the haptic feedback, the gesture-based controls all just felt really good. Not to mention the weight and size of the controllers just being smaller and the fact that it's Steam VR tracked makes it a pretty exciting prospect. I don't know how I'm going to like them long term, but I was very pleasantly surprised to see that it's not only a working controller after so long, but a pretty darn good one and it rethinks how we'd react with things in VR. But now onto my two absolute favorite demos from AWE. I'll start with this, the Wii Art. I've tried out 
out VR gloves, VR suits, VR chairs, and I think this is the one that I want at my home the most just to mess around with. Coming in this little box, you put three modules on the fingertips of your thumb, index, and middle finger. And using the built-in hand tracking on any headset, these little modules provide super realistic haptic and temperature feedback of different surfaces. For example, in the demo, they had different surfaces like leather and granite that when I ran my fingers across them, it actually felt like I was running my fingers across the grainy textures of leather and granite. It felt really realistic for a small device and I was pretty awestruck to be honest. I feel something in VR. <laughs> but that's not it. What really shocked me is that they had a section with virtually hot and cold gases that when you put your fingers over, it actually got really hot and really cold. I think it is really hot. And even though only my fingers were experiencing the temperature change, it felt like my entire hand was experiencing it. Whoa! Whoa! And this still isn't cheap at around a thousand dollars, but come on, this doesn't have to be a thousand dollars. That's just enterprise pricing. And this is something I could easily see coming to consumers way sooner than later and for way cheaper. And after this demo, I feel like temperature is a way more immersive thing as a haptic feedback than just vibration, and it's something I really want to see more of. But now on to my other favorite thing at a AWE, Tilt 5. This is really, really, really cool. Yeah. Guys, Tilt 5 is really cool. It's essentially an augmented reality gaming setup that uses some super interesting technology. But the best part is that their setup is probably the cheapest thing at AWE, directed at consumers at $359. But this isn't the typical AR setup. And something interesting is that Tilt 5 was actually the product of an X Valve project. And that's something I'd love to get into later on, but back onto the tech. Using two projectors on on the glasses, an image is projected onto the playing board, then reflected back into your eyes to get a really vivid 3D, almost unbelievable picture back. And you can do all sorts of things with it, play games, watch movies, anything. And it's kind of trippy too, because playing one of the demos, the tree line feels like it's popping out of the board by like a foot. Then you take the glasses off and you realize it's just a board. I don't know, just really cool stuff. And I can imagine how awesome it would be to play something like Demio or have a D&D campaign with a bunch of people around. Plus another interesting thing is that using the same board, you can have one person playing one game with a set of glasses and another person playing a totally different game using the same board. I don't know, I found that really awesome and this is something I definitely need to cover on this channel in the future. Just a few other things I found exciting at AWE to recap. The Yaw 2 chair was extremely fun. I like it a lot! <laughs> and it's something I definitely want to make a video about in the future. Playing a space game with this thing was kind of crazy and I still can't believe that you can have motion chairs in VR this good in your home. Also, two types of displays really shocked me. Neither one of these are VR or AR, but they're almost as interesting. One is the Leia, a near field display, something I've talked about quite a bit, that seriously looked like it was about three or four feet deep. Yet it's not, obviously. It was actually pretty mind boggling, but it's hard to capture on camera. And I kind of don't want to go back to a flat screen after using it. It's that good. And the Looking Glass, another pretty sweet looking 3D hologram display, like a real hologram that you can get and display anything on. Also really Really sweet. And these are both two things that I think that we're about to see a lot more of. So this wasn't even close to everything that was at AWE. Out of the hundreds of booths, I could only talk about a dozen or so here. Otherwise, we'd have a 10 hour long video. But what I do have to say is that the XR community is amazing. And you are a part of it too. I know that not everyone can make it out to big events like this, but at least I can share my experiences with you and show you what's coming. Because AR and VR are moving so extremely fast. It's not just Quest 2s and Resident Evil ports. There is so much more coming and we're all a part of it whether you're a developer or you're just watching these videos. And thank you again to Qualcomm for getting me out to AWE. I think they chose my channel for this not because of me but because of you guys, my awesome community. So if you're interested in developing or in AR at all then definitely check out Snapdragon Spaces. It's actually a really cool thing. And I also want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters for making all of this happen. I really couldn't do any of this without you. But don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, relax.